You're listening to the Creatorpreneur Podcast, Episode 9, and today we're talking about the most important page on your website. To find out what it is, stay tuned. Hello, my name is Rodney Washington, author, artist, and entrepreneur, and I'm passionate about helping creatives just like you do what lights you up and make a comfortable living while doing it. Each week, I'll be sharing timely business growth, marketing, and mindset hacks in interviews with courageous creative entrepreneurs to inspire you to get paid for your creativity. So grab your favorite beverage, sit back, and enjoy today's show. This episode of the podcast is sponsored by my free audio book and PDF, Get Paid for Your Creativity, 57 Ways to Monetize Your Gifts and Create True Security for Yourself. To get your hands on a copy of the free audio book and PDF, go to getpaidforyourcreativity.com forward slash 57 ways gift. Welcome back to the podcast. Can you believe that we are now on episode nine? It has actually almost been two months since we launched the podcast. We launched on April the 9th, and in just a few short weeks, we'll be going into two full months of the podcast being live uh, with, I believe by that time, we should have close to 12 episodes, maybe 13, I'm not quite sure, but we're going to be close to a dozen episodes or so in a very short amount of time. So I'm thinking about planning something special for that uh, that two-month mark episode. I'll, I'm putting something together. I've got something kind of kicking around in my head. I'm not quite sure what it is yet, but I'll talk about it probably on the next episode or two. So keep listening to find out what that is. Could be a way for you to possibly win some swag, something good. I'm thinking about a couple of things and I've got a few ideas kicking around in my head. One I'm actually really excited about. So I think I'm going to probably be talking about that really soon. So keep uh, keep your ears uh, tuned in to us to see or to find out what that uh, what that surprise uh, anniversary, two month anniversary gift is going to be. Also, before we get started today, I would like to ask if you or you know been re- listening to the podcast on a regular basis and you are finding value in what I've been sharing. I would absolutely love it if you would uh, leave a review and maybe a rating on iTunes. Uh, you can f- uh, actually go straight to the iTunes directory by going to getpaidforyourcreativity.com iTunes podcast, and that will take you right to the podcast directory. You can uh, leave a you know an honest rating. Let me know what you'd like, what I can improve on, uh, and also just leave a quick review. And I love it uh, to if you really feel generous. I'd love it if you would uh, take a screenshot of your uh, listening to the show, a screenshot of the episode that you're listening to, and share it with me on Instagram. You can find me also over there on Instagram at uh, I'm sorry, Creatorpreneur Podcast. The link is going to be in the show notes for this episode, which you would definitely want to make sure to check out in particular for this episode, because I'm going to have a lot of uh, nuggets and information for you there. And you can find all of the, the show note nuggets on getpaidforyourcreativity.com forward slash zero zero nine for episode nine. All of that information will be there. So uh, before I get right into it, I'd love it if you would rate and review the show. If you feel even extra generous, share it with me on Instagram. You can connect with me there and feel free to DM me because I will happily DM you back. That's direct message you back. I'm really wanting to build up more of an audience, some more of a more of a presence on Instagram. So I'd love to connect with you there. And you'll definitely want to check with me on Instagram as well, because like I said, I got a couple of ideas for uh, some uh, I'm thinking like some I'm a contest of some sort, but I want to do something like that for maybe the two month episode mark. And you definitely want to find out what that is by checking with me over on Instagram. So uh, let's get right into today's episode on the most important page on your website. Alrighty. Now, before I get into it, I want to first tell you what inspired this episode. Uh, recently, I decided to, I've been wanting for quite a while to really learn more about copywriting. One of the things that I do with my clients, and I do it just for myself, is I write a lot of copy. I write a weekly newsletter for one of my clients. I write the comp copy for her sales pages. I in autoresponders and opt-in pages and all of the things that we do in the online marketing space. I also write for myself as well. And so writing is something that I spend a lot of time doing and For quite some time, I've just wanted to get even better at copywriting. So last, I've been looking for some kind of course or training, and I've mulled around a few, and some of the 
some of them were kind of interesting, but they really didn't hold my interest or something about them just didn't feel right. I just didn't really resonate or connect with the things that I was finding. So uh, last fall, I believe last October to be exact, I was um, looking at a variety of different things online. I'm on a ton of different mailing lists and Marie Forleo is one of the people that I follow. And she has a program called B-School, which I kind of thought about taking, but it never quite felt like something I felt I really needed because a lot of the things I believe she teaches in that are things that I already do for myself and for my clients. But um, she did have this other program called The Copy Cure. And when I watched her launch for that that she did last fall, I actually... It was one of those times that I I go to a lot. I sign up for a lot of webinars. I attend a lot of webinars. I look at a lot of different offers all the time. But something about this particular program that she launched last fall really resonated with me. And it was just a timing issue. I just didn't feel like when I first saw it uh, last fall that the time was right for me to do that. But I always kept it in the back of my mind. So recently, as of last week, um, well, actually two weeks ago, and then she wrapped it up last week, she did the uh, relaunch of the Copy Cure program, uh, started at the end of April, early May, and I was on the early notification list from, la- from last fall. So for about eight months, I've been watching and kind of keeping my eyes open for it to see, and I made a commitment really at the first of the year when I was setting my 2019 goals, I said, one of the things I want to do this year is I really want to sign up for this program, which I'm happy to announce that I have. I'm now in Marie Forleo's Copy Cure program, and I absolutely love it. And I'll probably talk, I know I'll do another whole show about it after I've been in it for a few months and had some, just kind of give you my, my feedback and ideas about it. But so far, I'm really, really enjoying it. And one of the things that I discovered last fall when she did the launch for the program is one of her uh, her main co-teacher in the program by the name of Laura Belgray. And she has a fantastic newsletter and website called Talking Shrimp. Very interesting and kind of odd name. But um, from the first time I discovered her in the launch Marie did last fall, I immediately signed up for her newsletter list. And the lady is absolutely brilliant. I mean, she's very talented. She's got such a a whimsical, quick wit type humor that I really, really like a lot. Uh, very interesting story. Uh, I won't go into a lot of detail about Laura. The only thing I will say that I think that, not that necessarily this was a huge standout for me, but it did capture my attention. Um, Laura actually writes for television as well as copy uh, for online um, entrepreneurs. And one of the things that Laura writes for one of the, the TV shows she writes for is a million dollar. I'm sorry. Um, oh, my God. I can't remember the name. Um, <laughs> the Housewives. Real Housewives. I'm sorry. I blanked on it for a second. I was thinking mixing it up with another show on Bravo. I actually do like which I'll talk about in a moment, but the Real Housewives programs. Um, I personally am not a Real Housewives fan, any of them. So I, I don't watch any of the shows. But anyway, uh, just to put some context to this and why I'm bringing it up is that if you are a Real Housewives fan or you do watch the show, or if you watch the shows and you're somewhat familiar with them, one of the things that you'll notice on all of the intros of the show is that all of the women have a what I call a tagline, a thing that they say that describes themselves or who they are or whatever their interest um, is. And not thinking that someone actually writes that for them. And guess what? Laura is that person. Laura Bell Gray, who teaches the copy cure with Marie Forleo, writes the things that the women say in the intros on Real Housewives. So, you know, I'm not a big star celebrity type person, but I just found that kind of impressive. And so, again, I've been following her. I've been following um, her writing for a while. Like I say, I'm on her newsletter list. I will definitely give, put the link in the show notes for this episode uh, for you to sign up for her newsletters. I think they're great and really inspiring. So anyway, I'm circling all this back around to why uh, the focus on today's episode. One of the things that Laura uh, talks about, has talked about, which I found uh, 
you know, very important and very interesting uh, led to the subject of today's podcast episode, which is the most important page on your website. And I'm going to start it off by asking you the question. If I asked you, ask you, what is the most important page on your website? What would you say? And if you said your about me page, you'd win the grand prize because the about me page is the page. And Laura says this, and I agree a hundred percent. The about me page is the page that most business owners that have a web presence struggle with the most because it's hard to talk about ourselves. And that's the focus of today's episode is how to create an about me page that one really sounds like you. It's very interesting. It's engaging. It lets the reader really learn more about you. It the way that Laura talks about creating an about me page is very different than the way my about me page was. And I'm sure many of you who have a web presence already are thinking about their about me page and what you put on it. As a matter of fact, I just recently completely updated and redid my about me page specifically for this episode. And um, the link to that will be in the show notes that you can find that to go check out my about me page. But um, I once I studied what Laura was talking about and I just got under the hood about it, it really made a lot of sense. And what I'm going to talk about is very contradictory to what most of us, myself at the top of the list, think an About Me page is supposed to have. Many of us think that an About Me page is essentially our resume. It's to highlight our accomplishments, our credentials, and that kind of thing. And you, and if that's what you think, in part, you're greatly right. But there's also another factor of an About Me page that makes it much more interesting and much more engaging. And the premise from which uh, Laura teaches this and what really resonated with me was if I'm looking to looking at someone's website, And I'm thinking about possibly hiring them or I'm just interested. I want to find out more about them to even figure out, is this someone I want to listen to? I want to read about. I want to know more about. Maybe I'm not ready to hire them right now or at all, but at least I want to get a better sense of who they are. So one of the things that she shared, which I thought was really brilliant, was to put a lot or balance out the credentials and the resume type things, um, expertise things in there with things about you personally. And again, you know, there's more to it than just writing those things out. But the, the crux of it is when you let your audience know more about what drives you, your personal interest, uh, the things that you that that just have more deeper personal meaning for you, it connects and bonds you to your reader and makes you, I personally feel a lot more memorable because let's be really point blank honest here. There's a lot of competition online. Um, a lot more people are getting online now. They have websites, and blogs and so on and so forth. And everyone is vying for that piece of a pie when there's smaller pieces <laughs> smaller chunks available to all of us. So if you want to be what I call the top of mind person, you have to position yourself as a top of mind person. And I want to be clear with some of the things before I get into the meat of this today is your focus on creating all of your branding, all of your marketing is not just about you being an everything to every one person, because none of us are going to be an everything to every one person, meaning that everyone that you come into contact with is going to have a need for you. They're going to like you. They're going to want to buy things from you, just like you'll have customers that you will maybe connect with more than others. Some you would love to have as repeat customers. Some you might wish they don't come back. Let's just be honest. So to me, the purpose of really writing out a well personalized about me page is to attract 
and also possibly, dare I say, repel the people that you really don't connect with. Because again, we're looking for commonality. We're looking for people that we connect to. So for an example, Laura uses this a lot in her examples. She personally, because she writes uh, for them, she watches Real Housewives. So she mentions that in her bio on her About Me page. And so someone reading that will say, well, I if they like the show, let's be clear here, if they like the show, they'll that will spark a connection to that reader because they like the show. She's mentioned the show. Let me read more. Let me find out more. Uh, for an example, if you love to bake chocolate chip cookies, you can go out and buy them at Costco or whatever, but you prefer to bake them. And you have a specific rest, specific reason why you like to bake them over going out and buying them store-bought. Maybe you have some special ingredient that you use, but that's kind of your thing. You talk about that. And more specifically, you love to bake chocolate chip cookies for your kids on Sunday. That's the thing that you just do. The person reading that who maybe loves to bake will connect to you because you share that personal thing about you. So to me, what I really got from the training and what I shared on my About Me page is I shared some things about my life and some interests that I have and some accomplishments and things that I've done that possibly may bond a reader to me over the things that I, I've shared. And so, again, because there's a lot of people out there that do what I do. A lot of people have podcasts in the online business, marketing, creative entrepreneur space. There's a lot of people that have blogs, a lot of people that do the services and things that I offer. So in order for me to be a standout for the, the kind of person I want to attract, I felt it was important for me to revamp my page in order for me to share those nuggets about my life that will connect me to the person that I feel more I want to have that commonality with. So that's the reason why I did it and why I'm bringing this up. So what I'm going to do here today is I'm going to just kind of go over some of the things that you can do to, uh, I'm just at the, the things that you can put on your about me page. Now I want to be really clear, everything I'm listing here, and I'm going to have all these in the show notes as well. I'm not saying you have to do all of that. And I'm even going to put the link to my about me page also in the show notes. So you can kind of look at what I have. I will preface this right now very clearly that this is going to be a work in progress. I'm going to continually keep updating this page, but I feel it's important enough for me to zero in on it. And I'm going to also share this because it's just, it's just, I just remember this. Laura said is that when you, someone visits your website, the first page that they we go to is someone's about me page, and that's true. So that's why I preface the title of this podcast by saying the most important page on your website is your about me page. So if you haven't updated it in a while or you think it's time to if you don't have one at all and you're ready to put one on there or you've just kind of been, you know, d ducking and dodging it like I have or you've got something there and you think it's OK Use this episode as inspiration to start to beef up your page and edit it and clean it up and add more of that personal touch that's you so that when readers see it, that they connect to you. And I'm even going to take it a step further. Um, after you listen to this episode and you decide to take what I've shared and you update your About Me page, share that with me on Instagram. And DM that to me and I would love to take a look at it and we can conversate about it. Because again, I'm going to continually be updating mine. I've got some some other little finishing graphic type touches I want to put on there. But I'm still going to be updating what I'm sharing on there too as I just kind of, I'm just now getting into it right now. So again, I want to inspire you by showing you how I updated mine. So anyway, let's kind of get right into it. Now, the first thing that I want to tell you or share with you is... Again, balance out your professional credentials with your personal accomplishments, if you will. So again, if you graduated from Harvard, that's great. Share that. If you have a degree in a certain line of a certain area, share that too. Rather, it relates to what you offer or sell 
or not. Because again, the one number one thing I got out of what Laura shared was that everything doesn't have to necessarily be about what you sell or the service you provide. I'll share one example off the top. One of the personal things that I shared, a couple of personal things that I shared in my About Me page, which is stuff that I never thought I would share because I didn't think it was relevant. But I felt like, okay, I'm going to really put it out there. So a couple of things I did was I shared a little historical fact about me. Um, I was born, I'm 55. I was born in Fort Worth, Texas in 1963, uh, November 16th to be exact. And my mom brought me home from the hospital on the day that John F. Kennedy was assassinated. That also happened to be the, my dad's birthday. So I've that's always been something about me that I've always said, wow, if I had waited six more days, I would have been born on the day um, of you know that tragic day. But also it would have been on the day of my dad's birthday, would have shared the same birthday. So our birthday is six days apart. And it's also the day that, uh, you know, we lost a great leader. So that's one of the things I share um, as one of the things on my about me page. It again is just kind of a historical fact about me. So could, that could be something about you. Maybe you were born during a certain time when something historical was going on or it that doesn't have to be that. But I'm just saying it never hurts to consider sharing something about, you know, when you came into the world, uh, where you were, what was going on, if, what kind of city it was, you know, kind of what was happening. Um Another thing that I shared, which doesn't directly have to do with what I offer in terms of my services, but I'm, I'm a really good cook, a really good cook. And I don't say it in a braggadocious way, but I've cooked since I was five years old. Uh, My great grandmother uh, basically instilled the love of cooking with me and creativity, more creativity than I'll say cooking, because again, I do a lot of different creative things, but I feel like she saw that creative side in me and nurtured that through cooking. So I, I love to cook. And one of the things in particular, one of my specialty items that I love to cook is oven baked ribs and I make really good ribs. So it's one of those things that, like I said, it doesn't seem like it has anything to do with what I offer as terms of my professional credential, but it's that little nugget about me that I kind of call my superpower. You know, the fact that I can cook just about anything that I, I put my mind to. So that's just another example of something that you can share about yourself. Again, it doesn't have to always be about what your professional thing, the thing that you do to make money. It's just a part of you sharing something about your personality and your talents and your skills that go outside of just the things that you actually sell. Um, so I'm going to kind of go over a little bit of a list here to sort of give you some ideas. I'm going to put this list on the show notes page, which you will find again at getpayforyourcreativity.com forward slash zero zero nine. So as you listen to this list, um, you know, keep in mind what you do and maybe jot them down if any of these resonate with you. And then when you go to look at the show notes and my about me page, you can kind of see how you can maybe weave these things into updating your current about me page. So for an example, I'm going to ask you this, what is your standout talent? Another way to phrase it could be what's your superpower. You may have more than one. So write those down. What's your favorite TV show, author, book, celebrity, podcast, whatever? Write that down. Okay. Um, One of the things that I shared a little bit earlier, I mentioned it loosely because I couldn't remember the name of the Bravo show. I was trying to say million dollar, but I was, it was real housewives what I was trying to say. Uh, Again, I don't watch hardly any of the Bravo programming, but one of the one of the one of my guilty pleasures I do like on Bravo is Million Million Dollar Listing New York. I love that particular show. I watch that all the time. So I could say I'm obsessed with it whenever it comes on. I make sure I set my recorder for it and I watch it every 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 episode. So Million Dollar Listing is one of New York in particular is one of my favorite shows. Also, Empire is another show that I really like. Uh, I've just heard recently that they've canceled it. A little bummed out about that. But um, that was one of my other favorite shows that I like to watch. 
Um, I also shared, so, you know, what about you? What's your favorite show? What's your favorite book? Um, you know, you can share those things. It doesn't, again, have to be just about your professional credential. Um, you know, what's your favorite birthday dinner? If you, every year for your birthday, if you have a particular meal that you always want to have on your birthday, what is that? For me, it's Penang curry. I love Thai food. And my favorite dessert is apple pie a la mode with vanilla ice cream. Now, uh, you know, cake, I, I enjoy cake, but apple pie and vanilla ice cream is my, my hands down favorite dessert. So again, what's yours for your birthday dinner? What would be your favorite dessert? How do you like to spend your free time? What's one of your hobbies? I, photography is one of my, I would label it now as a hobby. It's not something I do professionally on a regular basis. I do have occasional clients that do come to me for photography, paid photography services, services, which I offer, but I don't sell photography services on a regular basis. So I kind of label it into a hobby right now. But what's yours and how you like to spend your free time? What's your favorite travel destination? Um, maybe share a highlight about a moment you experienced. Something that was a real, like something that was a standout for you. For an example, one of my fantasies is to buy an around the world plane ticket and travel around the world. If you've done that, you can possibly share that on your About Me page. What contest, if any, have you won? Maybe you won a pie eating contest since I'm talking about pie. Maybe you won a pie eating contest. Um, are you a mom or dad to an honor roll student? Were you ever an extra on a movie or a TV show? Are you a ballroom dancer? Have you won any competitions? And more importantly, do you have photos? Because again, you can spruce in photos of those things into your about me page. Do you run marathons? Are you a vegan bodybuilder? Do you love making sushi? Do you refurbish vintage cars? Do you speak multiple languages? Which languages do you speak? Okay. And as you flesh out your page with these little details and your interests and talents, you know, again, maybe you were born in a city with significant interest, something like that. But if you've got pictures to illustrate some of these things, throw them in there because, again, that helps to kind of, you know, you don't want the page necessarily chalked full of images, but maybe throw in one or two pictures of yourself, maybe engaging in that activity. One of the things that I did, which I'm kind of surprised I did, but actually I'm glad I did, is a couple of years ago I was visiting my family in Texas and I saw a picture of myself when I believe I was around six years old. I believe it's one of those school pictures that they take on, you know, school day, school picture taking day. And so I found this picture in an album and I just, I don't know, I resonated with, I liked it. I liked, I, you know, I just liked it. So I, I brought it home with me and I decided to put it on my about me page because I talked a lot about my creativity and how much I loved expressing myself artistically. And the things I like to play with, my favorite Christmas gift I got as a kid, the thing I wanted never got, <laughs> for an example. So I shared a picture of that kid that represents that time, you know, when there's more innocence and you're just sort of, like I said, figuring yourself out. So that's what I chose to do. You may choose to do something different. But again, my page, I just want you to use or refer to as an example, as an inspirational example. You do what works best for you. Um, let's see. What else do I have? Also, too, if you have any and any photos or videos. Now, this segues into the more professional side of what you do. Um, if you have any photos or videos of uh, client testimonials, people who have worked with you, link to those. Now, what I did on my About Me page, I didn't put a lot of artwork on there. I'm still debating about whether I'm going to put a lot of artwork on mine. What I noticed in the About Me page that I examined of others, they use a lot of links to their other uh, credential type things, the more professional credentials. So again, you'll see the balance between the, the personal and the professional on my page. I, for an example, self-published a book. So I put a link to that book uh, inside of my About Me page. I have this podcast, so I put a link to that. 
I put uh, I have a page on my site called Work With Me. So I have a list of all my services or I call my services menu. I have several links to that page inside that About Me page. I have a link to my photography uh, website where all of the work that I've shot that's on there. So there's links to that. So if you see how it's structured, you can pepper in links to your professional things. But again, you can balance it out with some of the more I don't want to I don't want to, you know, play it down and say trivia, but the things that are more personal about you. The structure that I used to write this out was very simple. It was really um, like kind of a 12 things or 11 things. It could be nine things or whatever it is, but 12 things about me. And I peppered in the personal with the professional and wherever there was a professional uh, uh, reference I made to some accomplishment that I made professionally, I linked to those things. So I linked to the book. Like I said, I linked to the podcast. I linked to my uh, services page. And as I add the testimonials and things, I'll link to those things as well. So and, and what I found too to really land the plane with this, this didn't take a lot of time to do. It just took um, a way of looking at it differently. Again, balancing out that personal with the professional and just making sure that I had all the proper links and I tested everything to make sure that they all worked. So again, this episode to me is something that I feel is going to be a work in progress. I'm most likely definitely going to do a part two to this, but I just wanted to put it out there to look at your about me page with a different set of eyes. You don't want it to be boring. You don't want it to sound like, okay, well, this is all the things that, um, that they've done but there's no reference to how they help me. So that's another nuance about the About Me page. I also say, state very clearly what my audience's problem is and the ways that I help them. So this is something that you'll want to massage and pepper in with that is what's the big problem that you solve or the big, the big opportunity that you offer or create for them. And then you want to be able to illustrate that in your words, in your verbiage, so that it sound it, it endears them to you and makes you feel like that you get them. So, again, it gets away from using a lot of what they call the $20 words and making the language really simple and very clear and being able to connect with your reader in a way that is very personable and connects them to you. So again, you can go directly to my about me page at getpayforyourcreativity.com forward slash about hyphen me. But again, if you go to the show notes page for this episode at get paid for your creativity 009 for episode nine, I'll put the link inside of there. The other thing too I'll do before I wrap up is that I also wrote an email that shared a lot of these nuggets too. So I did an email that I sent out to my audience. It's actually a part of my autoresponder series. And it's kind of like, get let's get to know each other kind of email. So it was a much longer email than I thought it was going to be, but I shared a lot of these, these nuggets. And then I invited the reader to respond to the email with telling me things about themselves. So I want to wrap this all up by really saying that this is just part one, of course, the wording, the verbiage, um, how to really massage it and really tool it and fashion it so that it really sounds um, connected. It sounds real. It sounds it doesn't it doesn't sound um, robotic. It has more meat and depth and tone and it feels like. The idea is, and this is what I really am getting from this training that I'm doing right now, is you want your writing to feel like you're writing to one person and to a friend. And getting out of this mindset that this is my business hat and this is how I speak to people when I'm talking about business. Shifting away from that corporate pent up, I've got to be very strict in the way I communicate and actually let more of your personality in and sharing more of those personal historical facts about you and those things that make you you and being that using that as a way to build that connection, that bridge between you 
and the reader so that that person feels like this is someone I want to get to know because that's really the first step. We think that the thing that people buy is just the product or the thing that we sell, but especially online, because they don't have that face-to-face connection with us, they really buy us first. They have to feel a connection to us first as people, as individuals, before they move into the space of wanting to buy whatever it is that you are offering and selling. So it took me a while to wrap my head around this because I was in that same sort of mindset that, you know, people don't want to hear about that stuff. That's not important to, you know what, let me actually try this. So I'm actually experimenting with this myself. And so again, I want to, you know, I'm definitely not an expert in this. This is something brand new for me too, but I want to encourage you to try it out. Like I said, take a look at everything Just, you know, look at what I have, look at some of these, you know, little nuggets and bullet points or triggers, what I have to call them, and see how you can flesh and weave in some of this verbiage into your About Me page. Maybe make a duplicate. Maybe if you have a page right now and you're not sure you want to completely rewrite it, make a duplicate page and do this new sort of uh, bio, if you will, of yourself, and then link it to the new page. Keep your old one in existence, but link it to the new one and see how people resonate with it. And again, feel free to share it with me. Check with me on Instagram at Creatorpreneur Podcast and send me the link to it. I'd love to take a look at it. I'd love to dialogue with you about it. And if you, you know, maybe again, I would love to do another episode about this. So if you do it and you share with me and we dialogue about it. Maybe I'll feature you on one of the episodes of the podcast and we can talk about what you had before and what you're doing now and how it's working or not working for you. I'm open to all of it. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode here. But again, you can find everything on getpayforyourcreativity.com forward slash 009 for episode nine. Uh, check out everything and then start sprucing up or redoing or make a duplicate and make a new page altogether. Share with me on Instagram if you feel so inspired and let's connect and dialogue about it. And I'll see you on a future episode of the podcast uh, about the same subject. So maybe about me page part two and perhaps fingers crossed one day, maybe I know she's big time, but maybe one day I'll be able to get Laura on the show in a future edition of the show. All right. So that's it. I hope you have a wonderful, uh, wonderful rest of the week and we'll see you on the next episode of the podcast. Bye bye. We have entered the age of creative self-employment. In the new economy, people are creating true security for themselves. That's why I believe there has never been a better time in history to monetize your gifts. So if you're ready to take control of your financial and creative future, I have something for you. It's my free audio and PDF program, 57 Ways to Monetize Your Gifts and Create True Security for Yourself. And you can get that at my website, getpaidforyourcreativity.com forward slash 57 Ways Gifts.